Hello and welcome to Beyond Raising Awareness, where we learn about artistic activism, effective altruism, and theories of change so that we can change the world together. My name is Paula. I am your host. I like cats and I have a fancy mic, so you should listen to me. <laughs> but today we have a guest, so you should listen to her today. Um, this is Naomi Joy. She is an animal artist based within the center of the creative city of Bristol in England. She creates paintings and sculptures at home in her cozy studio that is also full of any wildlife she's rehabilitating, such as injured bats. She's inspired by the animals and she works with and fights as an animal activist. The themes of her work often revolve around the animal agriculture industry, badger call, and fox hunting. Her work often highlights the beauty and personality of the animals to change others' perspective to see, so to see a someone rather than a product or a pest. Now we do have some questions for Naomi. Um, the first one is, what's your story? How did you become an, act an artist, an activist, and a vegan, and how is it all connected? So... Starting with the artist one, and I started drawing from a really young age. My parents could stop me, and that just continued through my school life. And I studied art at college and uni, um, and I was trying to find kind of my own voice as an artist. Um, but it was only once I left university that I photographed an animal at a local sanctuary and painted an owl, and realised that I absolutely loved painting animals and didn't want to do anything else. And uh, at the time, I had been vegetarian for a number of years, but I just recently turned vegan. And I kind of had a light bulb moment where I was like, ah, I can combine what I do with my art with my other passions of loving animals and being a vegan. And I think that's kind of the springboard that took off from there. And yeah, my art um, became my activism and then I became active in other ways and it all kind of merged together, which was very exciting. A great story. I actually can totally relate to that um, because I also had, um, when I was a kid, I was vegan at, or I was vegetarian. And then when I graduated from college, from art school, I became vegan and started connecting it all together. I think that's a thing that's actually more common than you'd think where people go vegan like right after college and then become vegan artists so yay um by the way my cats are fighting in the background because um we're in the middle of a tornado and i'm here and there's a bunch of distractions so sorry about that um so when did you decide you wanted to be a professional artist i think i kind of always wanted to be a professional artist but I've only really actively pursued it, I think, in the last five or six years. I was mm -hmm. an art teacher previously, and I was like, actually, I want to go back to making my own art, which is kind of from my heart. And, yeah, it's taken a number of years to kind of work part-time day jobs and part-time freelance, and to the point I'm at now, where I'm now a fully freelance artist, and, and it's amazing to be doing that. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess I am a professional artist now, but... Um, yeah, it's just my soul is to be creative, I think, so there's no other way for me to be. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on being a full-time artist. So why do you think the vegan movement needs artists? Um, for a number of reasons. I think um, the main reason being that visuals are really important in any movement. Um, they're really impacting, they can be read quickly, they can convey emotions and ideas easily in an accessible way. So they're a really vital component um, yeah, of the vegan movement or any movement. Um, and, you know, all vegan t-shirts would have been created by an artist originally, all those sort of um, different ways that people spread activism. You need those people creating those visuals. Mm -hmm. But also, um, with, in regards to fine art, I guess we're capturing a moment in time and history. We're showing currently what's going on in the animal agriculture industry. Um, and we're also producing kind of long, long standing work that's going to be in people's homes and be sold as prints and cards. And it's going to continue to kind of live there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with the, your point about the longevity of fine art, whereas um, you know, you see a lot of vegan memes um, 
and they get the message across, but are they going to get the message across 10 years from now is an important question. And are they going to make us reflect upon this period of history in a way that, um, you know, a painting might, that you know it's, you see it hanging on a wall and you know it's going to be on, hanging up somewhere in 50 years. So how are people going to reflect on it then? Um, thank you for sharing that. Let's get to the next question. So you've been focusing on creating art around bat conservation recently. Can you tell me more about this body of work and why is it important for, uh, why, why is it important for vegan artists to create artwork that's not necessarily about veganism? And why is it important for vegans to support this type of work? I think for me, um, I'm definitely like veganism is a small component of everything, but I'm all the issues I kind of want to be a, like work towards. So I think that we need to be raising awareness about a multitude of issues. There's loads of stuff going on in the world, and we need to be actively engaged in all of those. Like, um, no one is free, and whoever one is free, all those sort of things. Um, and I guess the back conservation. On the other hand, it's very personal to me because the animals that I work with and with coronavirus recently, they've had bad press. So it's something that I actively want to raise awareness about. Um, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is, think, let's introduce her. This is Leela. <laughs> oh, um, so yeah, that's an issue just really close to my heart. Um, but I'm obviously anti-species, so I value all animals uh, equally, so I want to be raising awareness for all different types of um, issues, really. Um, but uh, yeah, there's other sides to it, because obviously now I've got a lot of people and followers who have joined me who are interested in general wildlife or bats, but mainly have like never considered veganism, and uh, when I start to talk about that, I might be kind of... Uh, yeah, raising awareness of different issues to things I considered before, which is really important because I've not just kind of created a vegan echo chamber where everyone that follows me is just vegan. And it's really important for other vegans to support that work that I'm doing because it's opening up the door to be accessible to a greater number of people. And if um, vegans don't support the other stuff I'm doing, it means that I as an artist may no longer kind of continue to exist we need all the likes, the comments, the shares, the purchases mean so much to us as like individual freelance artists. So um, yeah, all of that support is really, really mm -hmm. vital for us to continue and spread awareness around the issues, including veganism. Yeah, I agree. If we can learn to support vegan artists and creating more diverse portfolios, then what will happen is that like they will like by talking about conservation, you can get conservationists to, to look at your work um, and to look at your work about veganism. So by only liking and only sharing and only supporting those works that like fit into a very specific narrative, what um, vegans may be doing is they may be actually keeping people from learning the vegan message. And while some of the people... So what happens a lot is vegans think like, oh, if I share this piece of vegan art, then um, it's going to get the message out there. But getting the message out there once to one person um, is often not enough. You need to reach the same person multiple times to be able to start that conversation. And ideally, you want people who are not vegan to be following you. And that's where those changes are going to happen. Um, so you recently had a very successful launch. Can you tell me more about it? What happened behind the scenes? Why do you believe your launch was successful? And how did the how, how did your launch allow you to do the things that you want to do with your work? Sorry, my cat is <laughs> her head in places where her head does not belong. <laughs> So yeah, I had an absolutely amazing launch. It really like blew my mind how incredible it went. So I'm really incredibly grateful to everyone who supported me. Um, during the lockdown, it was kind of, as of everyone, it was like um, 
kind of a time for reflection and, and shifts in life, I think. And I had definitely been missing creating art. So I decided to really put my foot on the pedal and really go for it. So I actually quit my job even before I knew the launch was going to work because I was like just having full faith in myself. This is going to work. I'm going to make it work <laughs> because I don't want to be working the day job anymore. And I just want to be creating art and helping wildlife because that's really where mm -hmm. my passion lies. So a load of admin and prep work went in um, building my website, building my subscriber list, um, making the actual artwork around my day job and evenings and weekends. So like, yeah, a ton of work. Um, but I think it was successful because I built a following of people who do love animals and wildlife. Obviously, they've come to the vegan kind of network and the wildlife network. And I've shared a lot of my back work previously so it, it seemed to be like a niche that I found for people that love bats um, but I've also had a lot of support from friends and family and um, through from past fans who I think just want to see me succeed which is really lovely mm -hmm. um, and it benefited me um, so obviously I've left my job so I'm now able to create and produce even more artwork which is really exciting to me because I think that's all kind of more themes and issues that I've been wanting to for ages and produce more things um, around veganism and other issues like fox hunting and the badger hole. Um, mm -hmm. I also have more time to yeah, rescue wildlife because I can live flexibly. Like if I get a call during the day, I can go out and get that back now because I don't I don't have anything tying me down. So by people supporting me as an artist, they're like indirectly helping me like help other animals because I'm now in a position where that and yeah and I can also give a lot of like money and funds back to the groups that I'm involved with so currently with the bat mm -hmm. launch I'm helping raise money for a flight cage so for the bats so yeah it's really great that I can give back in those ways as well <laughs> yeah thank you for sharing that I definitely agree that um, it's really important to support vegan artists because you know, the movement gets so much out of us. Um, we are able to, um, cats, <laughs> we're able to fundraise in um, like a lot of ways that like the movement can't always do. We're able to bring so many more resources and money into the movement. So actually by supporting us and by supporting our work um, and like making sure that we're able to to live full time creating vegan art we're actually going to be able to do a lot more work um and to bring a lot more into the movement than if we're just trying to like hustling all day and like working a day job and then coming home and making art and then also doing all of the promotion and marketing and like blah 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 um it's just a lot, but if you if the community stands together and makes sure that like vegan artists are supported, then we're going to be able to do a lot more. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and the next question is related to this. So among the vegan artist communities, we talk a bit about how difficult it can be as an artist um, due to lack of financial support. How do you think the vegan movement can change to support artists? Um, what can listeners do and what can artists do? Yeah, so it can be very tough. And I know starting out, it was quite a slow going process. And I had a lot of learning curves where I did free work and things like that. And I realized that I just really need to value the time and the energy that I put mm -hmm. in. I really need to charge totally. the I guess for other artists, like, don't undercut each other, like really charge money. Even if um, a sanctuary you're doing work for them, I sometimes do make kind of discounts for charities and things, but I'm still clear that like if I need money at the time, I'm gonna still ask for a certain amount of money for the work that mm -hmm. I do. Valuing people's like how many years it's taken me to get to this point in my this artistic career, I think really valuing artists and that it is a skill and really offering to at least pay them for their time or resources mm -hmm. or anything like honestly it all really helps to like keep us going so that yeah. can be incredible for everyone else like just supporting local artists like even by sharing liking or following our social media that can be a really good way of mm -hmm. and it doesn't cost anyone anything um yeah 
I think that's most of it, being stuck on asking for money and uh, and paying yourself properly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think a lot of artists um, need to value themselves and their work some more, but also recognize that getting free gigs um, is not going to lead to paid gigs. People don't think about um, the finances between being an artist and they may not realize that like, you know, we can't really work for free and we can't do all of these projects without any resources. So um, in terms of like what listeners can do, it's just being aware of that. And if you want to work with an artist, um, apply for a grant, fundraise to make sure that they're getting paid um, and that they don't have to impoverish themselves to be able to work for you. Um, it's your project and it's your responsibility to to finance it um, so without impoverishing artists so if you want if you have a project that you want to make um, I'll actually add in a bunch of grants that you can apply for to pay the artists um, in the link down in the description box so that's something that you can check out I'd be curious to hear um, your perspective on accepting money from comp- comp- the corporate sponsorships and grants. Do you have experience in this area, either personally or otherwise? Um, And when do you consider it acceptable or not acceptable? Um, How does the need to support oneself as an artist interact with the need to make make systemic change? That's coming from my friend, Jonathan. So hi, Jonathan. Yeah, it's a tricky one because obviously I've been through periods where if I'm not making enough money freelancing, I have had to go back to a day job and then that's been quite detrimental to my art. Mm -hmm. So it's always tough around accepting money, I guess, from corporate patron sponsorships. I've not been approached by anyone like that. I Mm -hmm. do have a couple of sponsors um, and uh, groups that I work with. Like I'm one of the Viva, like um, Viva Arts for Animals artists, but I don't receive any funds from them. (laughs) I'm just Mm -hmm. a kind of part of a group and I'm also sponsored um, by the Animal Justice Project but again it's not a financial sponsor that we just kind of have a mutual support of each other Um, Mm. so I guess yeah it would be tricky I think I'd only ever really want to work with people that my morals align with and I'm pretty tough on that like if they don't if they don't agree with things I agree or I have some sort of uncomfortableness around them even if they're offering me money I'd say no and I have turned down commissions and, and projects in the past because they are the things that I want to be creating and I realized over time that I really need to stay true to myself and only really mm-hmm. create work that really inspires like my own heart otherwise it just ends up feeling like lifeless and I actually get mm-hmm. really stuck up creating it so I think for me personally I formed like a very strong boundary there of like I'm only going to create work that excites me and that I feel all my morals and passions align with. Otherwise, it's a no, even if they are offering me money, because money will come in elsewhere and it always does, and you'll find projects that do align with you. So, Thank you. I definitely agree that, you know, we became artists to work on the projects that we feel the most passionate about. So it doesn't make sense to you know, sell out then. If we wanted to make a lot of money, then we would go and like, I don't know, go work at some design firm designing shampoos that nobody needs. <laughs> um, thank you for, for sharing that, for sharing your story and for sharing your opinions. Um, we are going to have to wrap up now. If you want to learn more about Naomi, I'm going to be adding in some links in the description box so that you can go check out her work. Um, and yeah, um, and then if you want to support either me or Naomi financially, um, you can donate to my Patreon commission art from either myself or Naomi. And, um, you can also buy, um, some of the merch from your recent launch, um, that will be up on, is it up on your website or just your Instagram? Where can we find that? So I do releases of my work. So they're sometimes they only online for about three days. So you do have to keep your eye out. Mm -hmm. quick, which is great but also (laughs) I don't like disappointing people so I'm always like buy it now while it's online I do have an on top that there's an ongoing kind of Mm -hmm. print Okay. All right. That sounds great. Um, so if you want to buy some of her work, make sure to follow her on Instagram because there's not a lot of work to buy. Um, so she'll probably sell out and you want to be among the first to get it. And 
Um, yeah, um, and then if you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing. Please like the video so that more people can see it. Um, and then if you want to do both of us a super favor, you can share this video with one of your friends. Um, and yeah, that is all. I hope you have an amazing day and we'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye.